Research articles is an invaluable source of knowledge. In fact, this is as sophisticated as information gets. More detailed than in any book or YouTube video which often simplify and mash different papers together. But there is one problem. There are just too many of them for any human being to handle. I mean, in neuroscience field alone, tens of thousands of papers get published every year. And it's a real challenge to make sense of this enormous sea of information, to understand which papers are worth reading and which are not worth your time. I've already talked about a way to download any research paper for free in the previous video, so if you haven't seen it, go check this out after this one. Today I'd like to tell you about a new amazing tool to help you discover relevant research papers in the first place. Hi, my name is Artem. I'm a computational neuroscience student slash researcher. On this channel, we explore mental and digital tools and strategies for more effective learning and knowledge acquisition. I've recently discovered a life-saving tool which uses artificial intelligence to suggest relevant research papers tailored specifically to your interests. It's still an early beta, and you can find hardly any information on it other than a weirdly vague website and a handful of tweets, so I decided to make a video showcasing its capabilities and perhaps to help you get started. Like I said, it's still in beta testing, but you can easily request an early access, which is what I did. Just click on the corresponding button on the main page, and it will take you to the page where you enter your email. Now, they say they prioritize institutional emails, and the majority of students probably have their institutional emails, but even if you don't have it, there could be a trick which lets you sneak in by using a referral code, which I'll talk about a bit later. After after you enter an email, so just to show what it looks like, uh, it'll tell you to fill out a very short info, like your name, your institution, your role, how you found out about the website. After you're done, in seven simple steps, it will show you your position in the waitlist. Obviously, since I already have an account, I can't show you what the waitlist page looks like, but it's pretty simple. It's like, hooray, you are on the waitlist, your position in queue is N. Now, when I first joined this in the middle of May, I was 91st in queue, and it took me less than 24 hours before I got the, you know, the access. So it's a pretty fast process, so don't sweat it. There is actually a way for you to jump to the top of the waiting list, so you have almost an instant access, and that is by using my referral code. On the last step, if you just type in uh, this text, you can also find this in the description below. It will, like they say, you know, put you to the top of the waiting list. You can check your position in queue anytime by typing in email, the same that you used to sign up in the same field. Now, let me clarify something here. We have two websites. The first one is researchrabbit.ai, and it's the main website which contains the information, all the links to the Twitter, the reviews page, the team information, the contact page, but it doesn't have the app functionality. To use the Research Rabbit, there is a second website to which this button at the center redirects you. So if you click on it, it will take you to the researchrabbitapp.com. The thing you see here is just one single field for typing in an email. And the later functionality depends on what type of email you type in. If you put in the email that you have never used, like if you are a new user, then typing it will tell you to fill out the survey. If you type in the email which you've already used to fill out the survey, but you still are on the waiting list, it will show you your position in queue. Uh, finally, if you type in the email which has the access to the system, so which basically moved to the top of the waiting list, it will bring up the password page, so you can you know basically log in just like any other website and start using the system. Funny thing, when I was provided the access, I never received the link with the password. So one moment, I'm in the waiting list. The next, it tells me to type in my password, which I never entered in the first place. Now, now, that probably was some sort of bug and it wouldn't happen to you, but what I had to do is just click on the forgot and change password and type in the new password, kind of reset this by following the link that they sent me to the email. When you finally, hopefully, log into the system, you will see the collections bar. Uh, this should be empty in your case because these are my custom-made collections, so you will not have these. A collection is precisely what it sounds like. It's a collection of elements based on which ResearchRabbit constructs recommendations and suggests you similar and related articles which the system thinks would be a wonderful complement to that collection. It's powered by artificial intelligence, which means that the relevance and the quality of suggestions grows 
with the number of items in each collection. So by adding more articles, you kind of drive the system and the quality of suggestions improves. It's time to create your first collection. Just click on the plus button and give it a name. I'm going to call this one Chunking. For the magic to happen, you need to give it an initial spark by manually adding a couple of papers to the collection. You can do so either by typing in the title, the DOI, or importing from your citations manager, like Zotero or Mendeley, if you have one. Just to piggyback on the last video, suppose I was watching something on Coursera. I checked out the references, read these three papers, and decided, you know what? I really like this concept of chunking in the working memory, and I'd like to read more about it and the related topics. So I'm going to copy the title of the first paper and paste it to the corresponding field on ResearchRabbit to add it to my chunking collection. You can see that the system successfully found the instance we want, so I'm going to click to this collection button to add this. I'm going to enrich the collection just a little bit more by doing this to the two of the remaining papers. But don't worry, you can start using Research Rabbit with only one paper if you don't have much to add yet. Pressing the Earlier Work button will show us papers that are often cited by the items in your collection, and thus are likely to function as an essential foundation on which later work in that field is built. The grey number in the top right corner shows the number of citations. Not surprisingly, you see that the original paper by Miller in 1956 has skyrocketed to the top. This is the seminal piece of work which first estimated the size of the human working memory and led to the development of chunking concept and consequent theories of working memory and expertise acquisition. You can sort this list either by relevance to the collection, which is default, by the number of citations or by recency. Clicking on the paper will bring up its abstract so that you can read more about it. And if you think that it's relevant and if you're really hooked, right from there you can add this either to a current collection or any of the other existing ones if you think that this particular paper would be better off somewhere else. Clicking on the blue title will take you to the source page. From there you can find the full text, uh, for example through Sci-Hub, which I talked about in the previous video. You can also find later work, which are papers that follow up on the items in your collection. For example, in this case you can see that I get many very recent articles 2016-2017 on chunking and memory capacity estimation. There is also a similar work section, which will show you, surprise surprise, similar articles. They not necessarily have citation relationships with your collection, but are still in some way related and could be useful and very interesting. For example, there is Attention and Memory, an integrated framework paper with a great number of citations which looks very delicious. Another great example is this paper right here, which talks about how the magic number of working memory chunks is actually just 4, not 7. I remember Barbara Oakley mentioned it in one of the Coursera lectures, so I'm going to add this to a collection. A nice cherry on top is that sometimes it's possible to get the full text PDF right off the research rabbit, and no sci-hub is needed. One of my favorite features is the ability to visualize the papers. For example, in this case, of the similar work section right there, it shows you the graph where nodes are the papers and links indicate citation relationship. By dragging the nodes, you can untangle connections to better see the underlying structure. What I like to do is to find hubs, nodes that have a lot of connections, and to my mind, that means that it's either a very foundational paper or a comprehensive review article, which in any case is worth reading to build a better understanding. You can click on any article to find out more about it. For example, I see that this 1996 one describes template theory. I can then go ahead and see the similar work for this very paper to find out more sources of information on template theory, and I can visualize them as well. Or you can click on these authors to see who worked in that field and who has something to do with the template theory. We can also visualize the authors to see who collaborated with whom and to find this type of clicks in the graph that shows citation communities. Suppose I'd like to find out more about a work by Alexander Bargoin because he seems to be kind of in the center of this group. By clicking on the node, I can see his published work sorted by the number of citations, uh, for example, to see the seminal and most famous pieces of work by that author. The great thing about Research Rabbit is that you can always trace back your steps, so if at any point you find yourself lost, for example, from quantum physics you somehow got to the paper on aerodynamics of anime titties, then by scrolling to the left you can find where you took the wrong turn, or the right turn depending on what you're into. To reset, all you have to do is to close one of the tabs, which will automatically close all the tabs to the right and you can start fresh. Literature discovery on Research Rabbit has a very captivating and exploratory character to it, which often takes unexpected turns. For example, in this case, by looking at suggested authors, I came across Claude Shannon, the author of information theory. This was a total surprise, and I, by myself, would never have thought to relate information theory to the chunking in the working memory, 
But now I can begin thinking about it, and it's a very interesting point to dig deeper. Basically, this concludes it. The general workflow is like this. You combine different views and features to explore this space of literature in unexpected ways. If you come across something that you think is relevant or interesting, add it to a collection and grow a database to get even more opportunities thanks to AI. Moreover, ResearchRabbit also sends you occasional emails with great matches of relevant papers that the system has found for you. That's pretty much it. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel, press the like button, share it with your friends, and stay tuned for more interesting stuff coming up. Goodbye, and thanks for the interesting knowledge.